Hello, my name is Doug Rombaugh, and in this series of videos, I'm going to be walking through the basic steps for deploying a website. Now, I'm going to be doing this in as manual a fashion as possible, which means that for the majority of people who want to deploy a website, this is probably not the best approach for you. What we're going to be doing is purchasing a domain name, setting up our own web server that we manage top to bottom, and then using that to host our website. There are plenty of hosting solutions that do not require you to manage the web server. So if you are not interested in that, this is not the sequence of steps for you. But if you are interested in playing around with managing servers, then you're in the right spot. So a couple of things that we are going to need. Uh, thing one is we're going to actually need a website, the thing that we want to host. I'm not going to be talking about writing a website here, simply hosting it. So what I have here is my website that I worked very, very hard on. It is a thing of beauty. And this is the page that we're going to be setting up hosting for. Now, if you are completely unfamiliar with how this works, websites are effectively just text files. They're text files that are written in a special markup language called HTML. So this is the actual HTML code that my web browser here is rendering when it opens up this file. It's a bit like Microsoft Word, right, where you have a file format which contains special tags that say this text is bold, that text is italics, that text is centered. And then when you open that file up inside of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word renders the text appropriately. A web browser works the same way. These are the tags that tell it how to format the text. And then when it opens up the file, it shows it in that format. So important thing to understand about how web pages work is that fundamentally what we are doing is we are placing a bunch of files, a bunch of text files that look just like this one, into a directory on a computer somewhere. Now, for, if we go and take a look at my website, say Douglas Rumbaugh, pull up my most recent blog post from a little while ago, the way that this works is as follows. If we look up here, in the address bar of the web browser, this is what's known as the URL or the URI. It consists of a couple of components. This right here, douglasrumball.com, is the domain name. You can think of the domain name as being the address of the computer which contains the files. After the domain name, we have the rest of the URL post Vim as language noun. This is the location of the file that we're looking at on the server identified by the domain name. Does that make sense? We have a computer followed by what file from that computer we want. And so what we are going to be doing here is we are going to be setting up a computer, linking it with a domain name so that the quote unquote, the internet knows where that computer is located, and then putting files in the appropriate spot so that we can access them uh, just like this. Uh, there's one other component to this, which is this HTTP, HTTPS at the beginning. Whoop. Uh, that indicates what's called the protocol. The big two for the internet that we care about are HTTP, which is the hypertext transfer protocol. It's the protocol for transferring HTML, which is hypertext markup language just the text of the internet. And then the S on the end, HTTPS, indicates that it's encrypted. It's an encrypted connection. Our site, when we're done with this, will be served over HTTPS. Every site should be served over HTTPS in the year 2021. And there can be no discussion on that point at this, at this time, I think. If your website is not over HTTPS, there, there's no reason not to. It takes two seconds. It's free. Just do it. it. Makes life everyone's life easier. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Got a bit preachy there for a second. Anyway, uh, so we need the website. 
we're going to need the domain name and the web server. The domain name will identify the web server. And then we're going to need SSH, which is how we are going to be going in and configuring our web server. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the domain name. In the next one, we'll take a look at getting a web server and setting it up. And we'll do a few other things from there. Uh, as a side note, if you're watching this when it first releases, I am staggering the release of the videos in this series um, so as not to upset the algorithm and flood everyone's subscription pages. But I am uploading them all at the same time unlisted. So they're all there. There's a playlist linked in the description and also on the end cards at the end of this video, you'll be able to go to the next one. So all the videos are available at once. You just will only be notified of them in a staggered fashion because YouTube. Okay, so domain name, that's the first thing that we need that's not the website. There are a bunch of different vendors that you can use to register domain names. Namecheap is the one that I typically use. So Namecheap is the one that I will be demoing here. We are going to need to use this in two different spots right now to register the domain name. And then later we are going to need it to link the domain name up to our server. So we'll, we'll be revisiting this again. But first thing you gotta do is figure out the domain name. So if I just do a quick search here for Douglas Rumba, you can see a whole bunch of options come up, some of which are available and some of which are not. Obviously only one person can have a domain name at any one time. So your options are going to be somewhat limited based on what other people have. It can take a little bit of trial and error and experimentation to get a domain name that works for you. And unfortunately the odds of you getting exactly the one that you want are quite slim. Now you do have one advantage which is the, this last bit, .org, .com, .ai, etc. what's called the TLD, the top level domain. Uh, there are a whole bunch of them. So if the specific name that you want is not available in say a .com, there's a good chance it will be available in something. So you can go through and find one that you are happy with. A uh, Couple of points to be aware of with respect to choosing a domain name. Some of these top level domains are in higher demand, so to speak, than others. And you will see that reflected in the price. For example, this .ai is quite expensive. These are annual subscriptions, so you have to renew them every year. Additionally, some of these domain top level domains uh, have special restrictions on them. Uh, for example, .ai, .dev, and a couple other things like that, I believe, require you to serve the website over HTTPS if you're going to use them. Our website will be over HTTPS, so that won't be a significant obstacle to you. Just be aware. Uh, there is one moment in this series where we will serve it over HTTP initially. You may have issues with that. I have actually not tried it because I don't own one of those domains. Another thing to be aware of about domain names is that domain names are, as you can see, with the exception of some of these really in-demand ones, relatively inexpensive. And as a result, technical people, for some reason, are quite fond of stealing domain names out from other people. So if you decide you want a particular domain name, you need to buy that domain name before you tell anybody at all that you are interested in it. I have seen this happen to several people and I have seen several people do it that I know personally. What people will love to do is over here you say, I want to, or I'm going to set up a website on domain name X. And their first instinct is going to be to search for domain name X, domain name X and if it's available, buy it just so you can't have it. That's just the way that people are, I guess. So in the worst case scenario, I know a guy who overheard somebody say he wanted to buy a domain name for his company, bought the domain name before the company could get to it, which was the company's name, and then redirected it to a porn site. <laughs> I am not making that up. And that stuff happens all the time. So be proactive, buy the domain before you mention that you're interested in it. All right. 
So one other thing to bear in mind with Namecheap, and I'm sure this goes for others as well, is when you go to add a domain to your cart, it's gonna pop out with a whole bunch of add-ons that you can include. Things like web hosting, SSL, VPN, email, WordPress. For what we are doing here, you do not need any of these. We're going to be doing this work ourselves, so we don't need to pay for the add-ons. This SSL add-on here, you don't have to add that to serve your site over HTTPS. This is just having them do some of the setup for you. So you do not want to add this. We're going to be doing it ourselves and it will not be costing for $4.98 a year. Ours is going to be free. Web hosting. Our web hosting is not going to be $8.80 a month. It's going to be however much our VPS costs, our server. And once you have a server, you can stick a website on it. You can stick WordPress on it. You can stick a website and WordPress on it and a VPN and email. So you can set all of this stuff up on the server. You don't have to add any of these add-ons to it. Once you have that done, run through the checkout process. Make sure that you are aware of the renewal period because you do need to actively renew these things. And if you don't renew it in time, then it you lose access to it and it goes back out on the general market again. So those are all things you gotta be aware of. But once you go through all this, you will have your domain name. It's also, worth, particularly if you're a business, looking at domain names that are close to yours and buying them as well. Because there's a very common trick that people will do where, so say there's google.com, right? Well, if I, uh, if I mistype that and say drop one of those O's, it also goes to google.com. So what happens is companies will purchase the domains that are close to their existing domain and redirect them. The reason for this is because what some people will do is they'll find a domain like gogl.com that seems likely that someone will accidentally type instead of Google. And then they'll use that, at, they'll set up some sort of a phishing scheme or something on that site to target Google's customers. So you want to be aware of that as well. There's a lot of um, silly little attacks that can come about with domains. So it's worth, it's worth thinking about that as you select a domain and perhaps defensively purchasing some other ones in advance if that's particularly relevant to you. Okay, so that's picking your domain name and getting that purchased. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at the server, setting up our server that we are going to use to actually host the website. So I hope that you found this interesting and I will see you over there.